Hello and welcome to another video. According to the fundamental theorem of algebra, if you solve a linear equation, you're supposed to get one solution most of the time. If you solve a quadratic equation, you're supposed to get two solutions. If you solve a cubic equation, you're supposed to get three solutions. So if you solve a sixth degree polynomial equation, you're expected to get six solutions. So how do, you, how do you do it? How do you solve an equation and get six solutions? Well, let me show you in the video. So for this problem, the first thing you want to look for is that this looks like a quadratic equation. If only I can replace x cubed with another letter like y, then this will be the square of this. Always look out for that. If the first term, the variable in the first term, appears to be the square or the, the middle variable, then you have something more like a quadratic equation. What you have to figure out is how do I factor this or how do I solve it? So now I can say, because x to the sixth is the square of x to the third, I can say let y be equal to x to the third. So I can rewrite this equation as y squared minus 9y plus 8 is equal to 0. And you see with that, you can factor this. What two numbers really multiply to get 8? But when you add them, you get negative 9. Well, those two numbers are negative 1 and negative 8. Okay, so I'm going to just replace this and factor. So I have y squared minus y minus 8y plus 8 equals 0. Okay, I can say y into y minus 1 minus 8 into y minus 1 equals 0. So I can say y minus 1 and y minus 8 equals 0. Okay, so I know that y uh, minus 1 equals 0 or y minus 8 equals 0, which tells me that y is equal to 1 or y is equal to 8. Now remember that y from the beginning was x cubed. So I can replace this and say um, x cubed equals 1 or x cubed equals 8. What most students will do at this point is take the cube root of both sides and they're going to get one answer because the cube root of 1 is 1, the cube root of 8 is 2. Then they get two answers. Okay. Don't do that because you're supposed to get six answers. You can't just take the cube root of both sides at this stage. You have to rewrite this expression because you know you have to get six answers. So we're going to take this and say that x cubed equals 1 implies that x cubed minus 1 is equal to 0. So you're going to see this expression as if it was the difference of two cubes because we can write it as x cubed minus 1 cubed equals 0. Now we can do the expansion. So you know how you have difference of two squares? You have difference of two cubes also. So what's the formula for difference of two cubes? I think I'm going to write it somewhere here, and then I'll use it and erase it later. Know that a squared minus b, sorry, a cubed minus b cubed, you have to memorize this. This is something, as a math student, you have to memorize, OK? Is equal to, just look at the sign, repeat it, a minus b. Once you're done with that, the next one is more like a quadratic equation, but to now be a squared, and the ending part of it will be b squared, and the middle will just be plus ab. Okay, so you know that this will always be positive. This will always be positive. This sign here and this sign must be different. That's all you need to remember. Okay, the sign in the middle here and the sign in the middle here have to be different. So if you start with minus AB, then this has to be plus. But that's the structure. That's an easy way to remember it. Okay, so I'm going to apply that here. So this is going to be A minus B. That's X minus 1. Then I'm going to have A squared, which will be X squared, plus the product of the two. That's X times 1, which is going to be X. And then I'm going to have the square of this term, 1 squared. Okay, that's plus 1 equals zero. So now I have something to solve. Okay. So based on what I have, this is equal to zero and this is equal to zero on the basis of just this one. Then I'm going to apply the same thing to this and we'll get the same, a similar answer. Okay. So let's quickly solve this and I'm going to get rid of this now. So what you have now is x minus one equals zero or x squared plus x plus one equals zero. Well, we can from here say x is equal to one. 
That's the conclusion of this one. Or, now here, we have to solve this quadratic equation. This cannot be factored, so we have to use the quadratic formula. Okay, so if we use the quadratic formula, it's going to be um, my x will be equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared, which will be 1 minus 4ac is going to be 4 over 2a. 2a is going to be 2. Okay, so this is going to be equal to um, minus, what is our b? Oh, come on. I'm just going to put 1 there because that's it. So it's going to be minus 1 plus or minus square root of negative 3 over 2. Well, we have to write this in the clean way because the square root of negative 3 will going to be 3i. It's going to be 3i. So this is negative 1 plus or minus square root of 3i over 2. So now, on the basis of what we've done, we know that x is equal to 1 or x is equal to negative 1 plus 3i over 2, or negative 1 minus 3i over 2. So on this side, let's say that x, just bring it at the bottom here, x is equal to 1, or x can also be negative 1 plus square root of 3i over 2, or it could be negative 1 minus square root of 3i over 2. So we just did that for this one. Now we're going to apply the same rule to this side. And we're going to say that x cubed, so here we say x cubed equals 8 implies x cubed minus 8 is equal to 0. And then we go down the same line, we say that x cubed minus 2 cubed is equal to 0, which is x minus 2, and then you have x squared um, plus, plus 2x plus the square root of 2, which is 4, equals 0. So now, obviously, we can conclude, just like we concluded here, that x minus 2 equals 0, which means x is equal to 2. That's another solution, and we can add it to the list here. x is equal to 2. So let's see the other two answers we're supposed to get from that side. So this is going to be or we have x is equal to, and I can solve it here. So I can say that x is equal to minus b minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4ac, which would be minus 16, over 2a, which is 2. And then we have negative 2 plus or minus square root of negative 12 over 2. Well, we can actually take our 4 from this negative 12, and um, that's going to be 2 rad. So we can write it this way. This is going to be negative 2 plus or minus, so this is going to be 2 square root of negative 3. Because we've taken out 4, and the square root of 4 will be 2, so already taken care of over 2. So this 2 will cancel out these 2, or you just say, I'm going to factor out the 2, and then I'm going to have negative 1 plus or minus square root of negative 3. So eventually, um, let me just manage. If you factor out the 2, that 2 is going to cancel this out. I'm going to skip a line because I'm running out of space. Okay, or I could just write it on this side. You're going to end up with 2 um, into negative 1 plus or minus, uh, and this is going to be the square root of 3i, square root of, sorry, negative 3 um, over 2. So as you can see, this 2 cancels this 2 out. And so what you're left with is negative 1 plus or minus, well, square root of 3i. Okay, and that's going to be our answer. It's going to be negative 1 plus or minus square root of 3i, and that would be the combination. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, so we're going to have negative 1 plus square root of 3i, and the last one will be negative 1 minus square root of 3i. Wow! And these are all six answers you're supposed to get from solving the sixth degree equation. Hope you learned something in this video. If you did, Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section, and be subscribed if you're not. I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.